Hi there again, it's Peter here, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front end development. And in today's tutorial, we're gonna talk about how to animate SVG with Greensock. Alrighty, so let's firstly have a look at the final demo, so final page which we'll be creating. So if I refresh this page, you'll see the tomato falling down, breaking into two pieces to match exactly the same animation sequence as you could see at the start of this YouTube video. Okay, so I'm try I try to recreate the same animation using SVG and Greensock. Okay, so we'll firstly deconstruct the HTML of the SVG, then we'll look at the CSS, how the parts are positioned and combined together, and then we'll break down and deconstruct the Greensock timeline. The HTML for this effect is quite simple. I've actually created the SVG in my previous tutorial. I might create a video about it as well. But for now, if you go to how I created my first SVG article on my blog, then you'll see exactly how I created the SVG HTML. Okay, so I exported it from Illustrator, then optimized it through Peter Collinger's online editor and then embedded it on the page. So this is the final result, which I started this tutor tutorial with and just grab this SVG and put it on my code pen. Okay, so this is the code pen, which is exactly the same as the demo on the tutorial. So we can close this down and let's have a look at the HTML. Okay, so I've got two containers, intro and logo, which are just centering that logo on the page and giving it some space at the top. And then inside of it, as I said, is the SVG element, which is break, broken down into a couple groups and classes. Okay, so as you can see, SVG, we've got a couple of polygons and a group ID tomato. So this ID tomato is a group which groups together the left, right, and the tomato leaf. So this middle bit, it's grouped into ID tomato. And the reason for that is because I want this whole group to fall down from the top first and then go to the right position. Okay, so I didn't want to animate all three uh, at the same time. I wanted to animate the group and that's why I grouped it in the ID tomato. Okay, so the left and right bracket, it's fair enough. That's just one simple element, left and right bracket. That's why the classes. And as you can see, the the text under the logo is actually another separate SVG element. So let's don't worry about the text for now. Today we'll just break down the timeline for this animation down. Okay, so if I click replay, we'll animate and we'll deconstruct the animation of the tomato falling down into pieces. Okay. So that's about the HTML when it comes to CSS. Close the HTML view, as I said, intro just makes the whole space 100% of the viewport height with 70% centered with overflow hidden. And then the logo is the exact size as the view box. Okay, so if you look at the SVG view box, 308 and 152, that's how I set the width and height to our logo. Okay, so height 152 with 309 that matches the view box. Okay, the margins from the top, just to give it some spacing and the, the SVG inside of it, the IHT logo, which is the SVG element itself. You can see ID IHT logo is position absolute, centered and obviously width and height 100% and then I'm using transform to position it in the middle. So this is sort of a hack just to keep it at the right spot. But the main point is, it is the same size as the SVG view box. Now that we've got the HTML and CSS broken down and you're familiar with what's happening, let's have a look at the JavaScript side of things. So I'll turn the HTML CSS view off and we'll only look at the JavaScript. So if you click on the cock here, you'll see which libraries are loading, so we've including jQuery and also the tween max from Greensock. I'm using the CDN link, so I don't have to download it and host it anyway. And then CodePen actually looks after the document.ready 
so we don't have to we can start straight away with declaring our variables okay as i said we're not gonna worry about the text so the most important things for us are the first couple of variables so the tomato bracket right bracket left tomato left tomato right and the tomato leaves okay the rest of it are the buttons and the letters under there Alrighty, TL is the timeline. So that's what we're gonna use for the green sock timeline. This could be anything. We could call it tomato timeline or anything else. For, for this demo, I just stick to the TL. So we're creating a timeline, just simply making TL equals new timeline max. Very, very simple. And Then we want to make the tomato as a whole. So we want to make the left and the leaves coming together with the right part and rotating it slightly. So it can fall down from the top as a one group, as a whole tomato. So just to give you indication, visual what's happening, I can disable everything else. So just cutting out the rest of the code and you'll see how the tomato is going to come together. Okay, so the tomatoes together, there's a slight line, but when the tomatoes falling, no one can actually see it. Okay, so this is the percentage doesn't really work out exactly because we're using the percentages. But anyway, when it's falling, no one can actually see it. Alrighty, so that's where this tl.set method is used. We're moving the left side of the tomato by 23% and the leaves as well by 41. And then the whole, to whole tomato goes to the right by 2% and is rotating by 13 degrees. Alrighty, so that's our tomato coming together. And then we clearing the stage. Okay, so that's another couple set uh, set uh, methods. We're moving the whole tomato up by 200%. So that's the Y% percent value. Then we're taking the right bracket and left bracket and moving them to the right and left. Okay, so we're clearing the stage. And now to the most important and exciting part of the animation, and that's the animation sequence. Alrighty, so we're taking again the timeline and we're moving the left and right bracket to, so we're using the to method. So we're taking both brackets and we're animating them over the duration of 0 0.3 seconds to X% percent 0, which basically means we're moving them to the original position from these default or from these set values 200 and minus 200 percent. Alrighty. It does start with a slight delay, so it doesn't start straight away on page load. There is a half a second delay. Following that, we're animating the whole tomato in 0 0.5 seconds to Y% percent 0. So that's the movement when the tomato falls down and we've got the ease bounce on that. Okay, so that's what makes the tomato bounce. So that's this easing. After that, we're rotating it from the 13 person. So remember how we set the rotation to 13. we rotating it back to 0 and the X% percent 4 which moves the tomato slightly to the left. Then we're taking the tomato left and leaves, and in 0 0.2 seconds, we're moving them to their original position. Okay, at that moment, we're also setting the split label. So this is a label which you can use in GreenSock, and you can then start animation at, the, at that time. So we could this could be a number, but for, for easier reading of the code, it's good to create a label and then trigger and run other animations at the same time. Okay, so I use it split because for me it makes sense because the tomato is splitting. So at the same moment, I want the leaves and left tomato to go to the left, then the whole tomato to rotate to zero and X percent zero two, and then the tomato right moves to the right. Okay, so this split, these three, these three animations or these three tweens are actually, if we look at the slow motion, once it bounces, now it moves to the right, splits up to the left and right. Okay, so that's this split label and how we use the split label. The last piece of the animation sequence is the stagger from method 
on all of the letters. So the I hate tomatoes writing is staggered from auto alpha zero. So it animates to auto, auto alpha one and 0 0.01 is the duration and 0 0.3 is the delay between each of the letters. Okay, so this is the duration and that's the space or that's the time between each of these tweens. And at the end we adding the end label which we later on use for the reverse animation. Okay, so when someone clicks on the reverse I want the timeline to go to the end and play in a reversed order. Okay, so that's where this end label is used for. Alrighty, so hopefully this gives you a little bit of idea how GreenSock timeline works and uh, how you can animate your SVGs. If you find that it doesn't work in your browser, that's because we use these X and Y percentage uh, attributes and they are not really well supported across some browsers. So you might find Firefox and maybe even IE to struggle with the positioning. So the best to view this demo is in a Chrome. And if you want to make it work in any other browser, you would need to set the percentage in or the X and Y offsets in fixed pixels. Okay, so the percentage doesn't work in some of the browsers. So just a warning, just in case you freaking out that it doesn't work in Firefox. And if you have any questions or feedback regarding this demo or this tutorial, leave a comment on the blog post or under the video and I'll try to get back to you. And that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something about something new about SVG and GreenSock and how to combine these two together to create some elegant SVG animation. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.